No. For about an hour. And then yeah. Yeah. John Luke watches. Oh, okay. The audio was great. Good. Yeah. Boy, this is Good really to know. Very yeah. clear. Good. That was in the admin office. Yep. So that. Mm -hmm. Does it show who's watching? Not that you. I don't know if you even look now, it but shows us on YouTube, but we don't look like yeah. live. See who's watching. Or John. Yeah, John said he was coming. So some of the other videos on the channel there have had a lot of views. <laughs> Been surprised. There he is. It's about the hard part. You could miss the meeting and then watch it. <laughs> some, of them are, some of them are Teresa though too, because we had some issues with recording, so we went back to the YouTube one. Yeah, a couple of them oh. in the beginning I had to watch on YouTube. So. so you're inflating the numbers, is what you're saying? Do you concrete yourself? Well, I watched it later. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just glad we can do it. I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a good public service in my mind. I think so, too. To be Only to if you talk into your microphones. Check. One, two. All right. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Only 926. Oh. Sorry. Not 926. 626. 626. I apologize. I hope we're not here at 926, but I have a strong feeling. <laughs> that's, that's confused. So should we hang out for four minutes? Yeah. We have like, uh, 10 o'clock it is. Am I too much? Yeah. No, you're good. You had to unload them? What do you unload them with? I, I, was, I was absolutely amazed that you found these. Yeah, you need a grade off. This, that this, is amazing. That was a while ago. Yeah. When was that? I mean, that was this is five version, years ago? This is a great offer today. And I've got version one filed away. Yeah. So this is version... I'll fill you at my daily rate, 65 an hour. Now, yeah. This is when Jim was working on it. This is what we pulled from other stuff. This is the memo that we had on the different types of PUD. You know, and it's Prager and things like that. And I still had your back. Because I knew you are much we were more organized than I am. This. <laughs> we were going to finish yeah. this. <laughs> and I would throw it away. <laughs> Chairman, yeah. Do you have two of your strapping young men help Teresa get the paper and have to move over? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we the what? You got a bunch of paper over there, Terry. I'm sorry. I do. I'm getting you help. Oh, thank you. Oh, we'll get it. Well, well like the Staples people come deliver late. Is it over by the door, Marvin? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll get it in. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we. Thanks, Marvin. We pay him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a real card. I was like. Robin sold you know, I seen a delivery truck come in. <laughs> we were sitting on a lawnmower. Is there a garage door we can grab? It was express. It said delivery. I need to get a cart for the mower. Have you seen the ones you put on the front? They're like a wheelbarrow. Oh, yeah. I have a back. I want an attachable blower. They have an attachable blower. And I'm like, man, I would never have to get off. It'd be nice for when I mow the condos and stuff. Every day, it'd be yeah, nice for that. Yeah, on a dolly. So. Yeah. Right now, I take the blower and I just drive the mower one-handed. And I hold the blower. It's the most ridiculous thing. It was nice. Me, though. Yeah. Yeah. Expensive. I'll mow it. I'll be on the ground tomorrow. Your yard take like all of five minutes. Money? You have to like go around. I'll just mow it. I won't weed eat it. No, I mean like you get the you get zero things. <laughs> That's what I have. So. I got that bad boy out front. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know. I know. Well, someone like current roots is a huge commercial. I don't move people's trampolines. It's an a insurance risk. I found out like. You move somebody's trampoline, then it blows away in the windstorm. They'll blame you for not securing it. And you get so. Do we have to? Hey, do we have to sign this? Do we have to sign this? Um. Yes. Do we have that copy? I have it. Okay. I'll have you guys now. 
Ron, you voted. Ben. Oh, it was Ben. You do not need to sign it. We got it. Okay. Ben is a good guy. Uh, dissenting vote. That's like one of my good friends. Oh, my you right father, I found out. I paid opinion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All of my own. I asked you that. I said, do we have to write an opinion? Well, like, about it's it. like, it's not the story for it. <laughs> Like it's a statement of fact and the outcome, right? Yeah, I was like, well, all right. We didn't say that. Sure. I don't think we did either. I know. I know. It's the same guy. All right. Everybody ready? Let's go ahead and call to order the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. We'll go ahead with the roll call, please. Chairman Ryan Green. Here. Ron Dane. Here. Jesse Koppel. Here. On Merriman. Here. And Lee. Here. And we'll go with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and move to public comment on matters not on the agenda tonight. Um, so if there's any public comment, we don't have an internet comment anymore, nope. unfortunately. Um, we'll take that now. And hearing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment and move on to approval of the minutes from June 8th, 10th, and 22nd. We'll make a motion to approve as written for all three. A second. All right. And we'll move on to the... Can you do an all in favor all, or all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, so we'll move on to the adoption of decision and order on non conforming use for 120 through 140 Track Street. Uh, we have to, have to read that or yeah. we can just. You can just move to it. Okay. Move to but you'll want to move to adopt the written decision. Is okay. Yes, yeah, said. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to adopt the written decision. I have a second. Second. I'm sorry, who was that? Second. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, we do all in favor? Uh, I'll do a roll call just roll call. to be sure. Because okay. we'll have probably an abstain. Okay, Ryan Green. Yes. Ron Dane. Yes. Jesse Koppel. Yes. John Merriman. Yes. Ben Lee. Uh, abstain or no, whichever is appropriate for the outcome of this. All right. And we'll go ahead and move on to our work session on the zoning code ordinance. Starting out um, with Article 28. <coughs> All right. So. Okay, so as far as changes, I see uh, updating with the new regs on here. Um, you did make some changes at the last meeting, which have been illustrated on the copy on the screen. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay. So any any redlined areas are the the changes that you made at the last meeting. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you guys had for this one? I know we didn't have our full group last time, so I want to make sure everybody has. We got uh, one on section 2803 on page 81. Uh, we reference in the very last sentence of that uh, sketch plan as required in section 2911. Uh, yeah, that doesn't hold. Yeah, we don't have any, it doesn't, we don't have a 2911 and we don't define what a sketch plan is. Twenty-nine, it would be what twenty-eight, eleven, which is the pre-application. I think is what it's referring to. Yeah. Twenty-eight, eleven is the pre-application. Is that just like an as-built, more or less? 
That's I'm not sure. What, what would be a difference between a sketch plan and a, a preliminary plan? A sketch plan is just what the developer would bring to us before he does any, any engineering. engineering. Do you want it to be designated somewhere? Yeah, I, th I think we need to define plan? that. So. We could designate it on the, we could put it on the preliminary plan. Yeah, it should at least be on there, but we move towards what we require. What do we move to require now? I think the last meeting we we determined that they had to do engineering in the preliminary plan. Yeah. So do we, do we want to say for the pre-application meeting, they can do a sketch plan, which would be a more basic plat and not require that or? Yeah, because the pre, the pre-plat and all that stuff should be what's, what we entertain, right? The sketch plan is that go to the to like you and come to me yeah come to you guys if the developer wanted it to come to you guys but you wouldn't vote you wouldn't have to vote on it yeah the idea would just be that you would have a conversation yeah about like what's allowed what's not allowed it is it is in section 2811 sketch plan prior to this meeting the developer shall provide a sketch plan of the property clearly designating the significant environmental resources on the site and how these resources will be preserved, the portion of the site to be developed and overall densities of those areas. Would you say that kind of the, the community meetings, I guess, that we had had with the two recent inquiries would be like somewhat of a sketch plan type? Yeah, and Jim and I get them all the time, actually. People come to us all the time, like more often than you'd think with they'll they'll have like a drawing sometimes it's hand drawing or sometimes it's from, from the computer of a parcel of land and basically they just want to know like could we move forward with this yeah. and jim and i either say like yes here's what you have to do or no this won't work like so weeding out process sort of yeah ben the sketch plan saves you a lot of work mm -hmm. it actually does yeah. high level feasibility back of the napkin kind of So I'm going to leave that in actually and just change it to 2811. Yep. I asked about the articles too because they went from 28, 30, and 31, but 29 now has design review board. Right? Yes. So 29, you don't have to review that because you guys just forwarded it to council a couple of weeks ago. It's the exact same, but 29 now has that, yes. That's all I had on 28. Stuff. Is this in a shared field location? It's on OneDrive. Is it on OneDrive? Yeah, so you might, you guys might not have the link. I'll make sure that I send it to you. Under uh, E, under purpose, did we change that from strategic plan to, yeah, we did. And I, I apologize, um, we're switching over from Dropbox to OneDrive and that's why your Dropbox links no, one, no longer work. Um, I totally forgot to send you guys updated link. <laughs> So I'll make sure that I do that. Okay. I don't have a lot for 28. Anybody else have anything for 28? I think we went over that before. I know, Ron, yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot. I know we talked about before some of the types of PUDs. Um, I go back, I think it was five years ago, six years ago, or whatever, at this point, we were going through, you know, the PUD section then as well. Uh, and Ron, you had brought several examples of PUDs, final plaques that had been in progress at that point. I think this was before we did, you know, 
before the Western Looking County Accord that really, you know, put out there what a conservation design is relative to, you know, a typical, you know, type of larger uh, development. But I brought in the examples that I had, and then there was one other example that Bailey made a picture of that showed what some of those uh, developments look like, specifically like along Morse Road, where you've got uh, almost a green space in front of the primary road, uh, maybe like a boulevard entry type system. I guess similar to Leafy Dell, in a manner of speaking, um, that kind of set back that initial street yeah. um, that we had discussed. It was in a previous version. So copies of those to pass out to everybody. Uh, Bailey did to kind of see it's hard for me to show this is kind of the last virtual meeting that we had, but just wanted to put those in front of this commission to have an idea to look at them and garner any feedback from that. Um, but suffice to say, I feel like a lot of the conversations that we've had at this point relative to designs of PUDs or layouts for these types of large developments, at least I feel a conversation is more like a <laughs> conservation district or conservation design to promote open space. Um, your density would still be about the same, but I mean, more so to promote open space and, and yeah. distance and things like that. So some of these may represent that, some of them might not, but I think on the right-hand side, you see a lot of notations about what, units per acre, is that right? Yeah, Ron? density and un is units per acre. Is there anything else you want to call out with those? I just wanted to see it up though. I, I guess process-wise, I'm, I, I, I'm not 100% sure as far as the sketch plan. If somebody comes in with like the one you gave us for Verona, would they, would you consider that a sketch plan that you guys what? would then review? For what? I'm sorry. Or, I'm sorry. Verona. Oh, um, yeah, we would consider that a sketch plan. That's not a preliminary plan. So normally in a PUD situation, the developer brings in something like that, and then he works with staff and to get densities to where you want them. Most of the time, most of the time he works with staff. Yeah. And so we sort of tell him initially what will work and what will not work. And that could take multiple meetings. Yeah. I've had some developers come in for, you know, so many meetings before they're finally ready to get a preliminary plat done through planning and zoning. But this also says that they don't necessarily have to only come to me. They can also come to you if you want. We wouldn't charge them a fee if they wanted to come bring a sketch plan to you. We'd just put them on, a, on the agenda for okay. maybe half an hour and you guys can share your feedback. Yeah. Okay. But they don't, they don't have to do that either. It's sort of just an information finding mission for them. And Ron, another benefit from that too uh, is when we were meeting with Fisher and Miranda, um, and right away, they, I think they recognized that they weren't going to get along well in the same meeting. Was it, was it about 16 people in there, Bailey? 12? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Anyhow, after that, Miranda broke off and we just met with Fisher. But as they seen um, what we were going to require of them, I think that weighed in their decision to not develop here yeah. before we ever got to a plan. That's, that's what I wanted to make sure that the back and forth and negotiation that goes on in these yeah. is part of what you guys do before it comes to us. What comes to us would basically be the, the preliminary. Right. Makes sense. So with the examples of the PUD there, if nobody has any, any call outs or questions, the only other question that I might have is that um, <laughs> trying to find my copy the picture of the entryway into the development that has like the grassy open space in front we talked about potentially putting that in pud as a standard or requirement from a design perspective but um again that was a, a previous version that did not format over to this so didn't know if anybody had any feedback on that yeah i mean we want open space we want trees we want landscape um this is the sheet i'm looking at ryan yep yeah i can see that one there yeah i mean i know what you mean there it's definitely what you want it's going to preserve that rural character that we've been after i'm um, going down through so i mean i'm fine with that it's just about how you know what the measurements on something like that are what do you have 300 foot setback listed here yeah, is that what you're going for? And some of the metrics that would apply toward it, yeah, we would probably want to better define. But 
in my mind, I go to, you know, thinking about the Western Licking County Accord and, and one of the rural preservation characteristics they talk about is not having these uh, these homes where the rear yard is facing a, a street um, where your your front yard is maybe facing that. And something like this would probably be more beneficial to that where you would just have open space road and then the front yard of a home at that point. So you wouldn't drive in to, to people right. to drive down a road. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I've seen most new neighborhoods are that way that I've seen. So when you're driving down the primary road, you're seeing the fronts of houses and not the backs. So I'm sure I'm totally fine with that. And if I lived there, I would probably want that too, because, you know, I'm going to keep the front of my house, you know, a lot more clean. My kids are going to play out back. So I'm fine with that. I think people would want that. Yeah, how, how would we incorporate it in? I, I, I think it's a good idea. I'm just not sure how we would incorporate it into the PUD. 2808 is where I would suggest putting it. Residential density and design criteria. And then you do we want that there. PUD or do we just want that across the board? Uh, from general developments that are PUD centric, I think you're probably going to have the most leeway from an acreage standpoint to make that enforceable in lots, maybe not so much. <laughs> what do we want it to say? But I'm talking about, you know, maybe in the design or just zoning in general, we just say that's that's the standard for every neighborhood. But yeah, most neighborhoods that come in, they're going to be a PUD. But, right. But even if it's UR1, I think we might want that. Although it's going to be tougher in UR1 because you're more condensed, but I wouldn't be opposed to just doing that across the board. Just saying going to have a neighborhood here that's what it sounds to look like i guess we have to find what we would call it an open space entry or uh yeah there's a name for it somebody yeah, i'm not sure what they yeah somebody has to have a name for it there has to be an industry term uh, i think this is in reference to pushing that in the pud they're gonna and I know that there's not as much negotiation, but there's going to be some negotiation. If they come in and you're not that way across the board all over town and you say, hey, I'd like your neighborhood to look like this, they may want some concessions on something else. But with infill lots, wouldn't you want them more aligned with their immediate surroundings? With an infill lot, what I'm saying, if they're... Do we have a lot of large acre infill that isn't developed? That's what I think you're talking you're talking about specifically infill type. I was talking about just neighborhoods coming in in general. <clears throat> We're not on the same page. Neighborhoods coming in in general that wouldn't fall I'm under just a talking PUD about any design. neighborhood. You build, I mean, any neighborhood could be a PUD. Any of them coming in, and they will probably want to be more so, just because they'll want to have more design aspects they can control. Instead of just coming in as a UR1 or SR1. And then you're talking about, about, you're talking about he's talking about like if uh Concord, the guy from Concord Crossing comes in and meets all the requirements. That way he has to have that wouldn't be a requirement to go ahead and do it right now. Well, you wouldn't PUD. be able to do this in that new Concord one, would you? He's a PUD. He is now what's it zoned? PUD. That's zone. I thought we said it was zoned like you said it was long. I thought that was yeah. a UR1 or whatever. Yeah. PUD. Are you talking? No, there's there was never there was some confusion about the, what zoning. Good, I'm fine with it being a PUD. We can PUD. move that one around real quick. We don't like it, but you're talking over by um, the trailhead. That one, yeah. yeah. I'm just talking just about just in general. I'm like just talking in general. Neighborhood, in other neighborhood there. comes in anywhere in the village of Johnstown. Pick a place. This is how it should be. Hey Ryan, if you look at Concord Crossing West which has backyards that go on the Concord Road. Yeah. And you look at Concord Crossing East, which has that 200 foot setback before you see, uh, you, you get into the front of a house. Yeah. So, and so we're talking- We like already have that now. General development perspective, <laughs> right? Any development advantage of having, of approving it as a PUD, right? Is because it expires and you don't have a plot laying around that can, that's now zoned multifamily that they can develop later, right? PUD just allows a little more creativity within the framework is what PUD gets you because you could get 
houses and some condos, or you could get houses and a school, or houses and a pool. Or it's a, it's a deviation from the yeah, current there's, standard. There's room for creativity in there, which is why they like it a little bit more. Because you could have some dense housing over here, and then you could have some half acre lots over here. You know, instead of like an all that. UR one or something. Like that. Excuse. Yeah. I mean, if you're a developer, you don't necessarily want to come in and do UR1 because then you're just, you're playing by our rules. Even though you're still playing by our rules. Does anyone, PV. does anyone come in for development? Just want to be, they all want to be PVs. <laughs> Which I mean, I, well, I, well, that little, I like it better because that, it, little road. It, that expiration is, is the crucial thing in my point. No. Um, what's that? I won't hold up in court. The expiration won't? Well, that's sort of a question about whether it'll hold up in court. So we need to talk about that too. <laughs> I, that. I think with, with this, the way the, at least this was proposed and illustrated in this section, I don't know how applicable it would be toward the proposed development over in Concord Crossing West, because I'm not sure what you would define as an existing road to which your open space would buffer. Yeah, I think this is more so thinking about and was proposed in the context of an annexation. That's what I mean. That type of environment, which at that point, if it's an annexation, number one, it defaults to rural residential. Right. Unless, which is three three acres per unit, unless you have another uh, agreement before annexation to which it would apply either most likely a PUD is what they would ask for right. to where you could then go down the road of negotiating something like this in that type of setting. I would just take that off and just say, if you're coming in, and you're annexing. I mean, obviously the rural neighborhood is fine, but they're not going to do that. I don't think for the most part, they're going to want to put 350 houses in there. I'd like it to look like that, which I, I don't think that's a crazy ask because Look at Gahanna, Lewis Center. That's what they're doing already, New Albany. I mean, that's not anything new to them. They have that design right. on the books. That's what I'm saying. With any new development of substantial yeah, acreage, yeah. that this would probably be, it would probably fall under a PUD. So I think for the vast oh, majority yeah. of those cases, having it listed under PUD would probably be sufficient. I'm fine with it. Where like I said, I'd even go one step further and just say, I'll develop all of them. Uh, no fa single family structures shall back up to an existing roadway and shall face the boulevard collector or local street. And then it below that is where this picture okay. was referenced as an example because all the homes, it doesn't have any delineation of entry or exit for the homes, but you would assume that it would come off of those collector boulevard and local streets. There you go. chunk of land anything designated a pud with which even if this was on the books and it wasn't a pud but if it was a large enough parcel i would think you can make an argument that since this is a design standard for a large acreage development you could probably take it and justify it can you pass it. that down to me so i can read it yeah yeah i'm fine with, and i'm fine with going even further just saying any any annex no, neighborhood any annex neighborhood over X amount of acres. Over, that's a acre. I'd be okay with that. I'd, although I think any big chunk of land coming in, we would want to be PUD. I mean, if somebody brings in a hundred acres and we don't want it zone one specific, I mean, that's a whole lot of plain houses and the same right. size lots. Ryan, you, you might want to specify it as a major. We, we have minor and major. You might want to say as a major, a minor is for a small development. Yeah, that's yeah. That's you, wouldn't what I'm want, saying. you wouldn't want to apply that no. logic to five lots. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, over what's our what's our line for major versus minor? Do we five. Five, eight, five lots. Yeah, you need more than five lots. Is that what we yeah, is that our term actually major and minor? Yes, that's in our current code. Okay. But even I don't even know if this would be something that I don't think you could apply this to the 12 or 14 yeah, homes that were proposed off of Buena Vista. I don't think it would even be yeah. applicable. I mean, not, no. And that's why I think PUD is. You just make it PUD and they'd have to come in as PUD. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, we don't know what the term is. And since that was zoned as an SR, 
one based on the size of the lots. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Because that's not coming in as a PUD. But even if you wanted to, I don't think. Like that one, you know what I mean? Out there by the golf course. Yeah. Even when you left, it's big one. Yeah. You just like to My, my personal thoughts on PUDs, I think that a, a, per, a PUD is uh, probably the best type of development to work with because it gives, the, it gives the developer an opportunity to design the development as he wants it, bring it to the zoning commission, and then the zoning commission can kind of tear it apart or add to it or, or delineate some of the things they don't want. And then you reach a mutual agreement and then he builds it under that agreement. That developer's agreement spells out the lot sizes instead of it moves away from our zoning code as it is now. Man, I want to get that a hug before I <laughs> Oh, no, I, I agree with you. Um, I think each side gets a little bit of what they want, and I'm sorry, right. I'm fine with it. Adding some parameters in the beginning, though, lets them know what they're walking into. I agree. And yes. our expectations. Gets rid of some odd conversations, but we were talking earlier about lot widths, like the Polt or I'm sorry, the Shaybach development. Those lots are all 70 foot wide. Yeah. So there's not a side load garage in there, except well, not a part of what Shaybach has developed. Um, keeping that in mind, they utilize the lot because their PUD allows them to have five foot setbacks from each lot line and 21 foot from the front, uh, from the inside of the sidewalk to the front door. So, so they, they build big houses for ranches on small lots is what they're doing. Before we open this up to public comment, um, what else do you guys have on PUD? Well, I wanted to, let's, I, this may be a good time to talk about that expiration. I think we should talk to Yaz about it first. Okay. Uh, can you ask him about like in general, because it seems like a few of the zoning issues that have come up recently have been about like plans that were approved 20 years ago that are coming back to life. See what do you, if you what recommendations he has in general about um, if there's, feasibility feasibility you know feasible ways that we can incorporate in code to prevent that from happening well, there aren't many left but yeah i will well if you apply for a permit you know if you apply for something under a pud and we have it there hey you don't build on this before two years this it all expires you you sign that at the beginning but then they take you to court later on oh, well right. what bailey's saying if if they take you to court and the judge says that that's not, you're not allowed to no. Well, there was a recent case where someone was unable to build due to COVID, COVID and took it to court and the court said he has a reasonable excuse why he couldn't build and you need to let him do it. If you assumed ownership in like 1998 though. There's a question over whether that clause was in there in 1998. So we should keep it in there and then if the court said it if the court says it's reasonable, that makes sense. If the clause was in there when they assumed ownership of the property, I'm sorry about you. You you made an agreement. Well, a court may determine that they have a reasonable excuse to yeah. not be held to the clause, but it sounds like in that case the clause might be generally applicable. Yeah. I hope it was an exception, but we'll get Yaz's input on it. He's our attorney, right? <laughs> and if you look back at Pulte when it was permitted in 2001 or two, right in right an area there. When it come time to finally someone after the third owner of the property is going to develop it, a lot of the things that were there did not meet current code. Width of streets is a good one. Size of um, the distance on corners, uh, the water and sewer placement. So those things we did have something to say about, and they had to fall in line with that uh, that civil part of the development but we couldn't control the lot sizes or the density. Did we make um, any updates to the application for a preliminary development plan? Um, yes, last time you asked me to include 
the name, address, and phone number of a registered surveyor, which is now in there, and then a written statement by the applicant setting forth the reasons why the PUD would be in the public interest. That has been included in the preliminary development plan. And then in the final, oh, and I added the criteria for recommendations by planning and zoning. Um, in the final development plan, we've added the criteria that's existing because it wasn't in there. So we have that in there. Perfect. And then that's that's the last of the comments. And we're waiting to send this to council till we're done with the whole code or we Yeah, okay. I was gonna do that. Do okay, I, just, I could remember it's we're doing section by section or. Because then at the end, we'll have to go back here and just make sure that all of the chapter numbers match up and like, yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. I don't think there's anything on section about this i don't know if this section we like to add something like this we have language about donating land for school i think that we should put language in there for if it's not already in, if they if it's not already passed they're extending our utilities for us microphone we're like extending our utilities so if we annex the property across the street in our utilities don't run past it they can take our water and our sewer to the end of their property and stop it for us just for future or to the back of their property or as part of their condition. They have to. They have to take it to the end on they both have sides. To take it to the end of your property. On both sides? Yep. All, all ways? Mm -hmm. So pull well, it not to the, all the way from one side of the here and all the way Not the to the back, but from a major road to a major road. So you have to take it all the way across the right of way. That's what I'm saying. If so they, if they have a right of way that goes all the way through their neighborhood from Mink, 62. They have to extend it. And John, what we're doing now with the water uh, is we're doing a loop. Mm -hmm. So you loop the water, which uh, is very beneficial for uh, supplying water. So I would imagine if we have any new development that approaches us, that would probably be the number one thing we would want from Jack Liggett. A perfect example is that is the new Johnstown Point nursing home. It is a loop. So, um, and well, there another one we're just doing that was a loop too. I, I forget what it was now. It's down um, by Granville. It's for the uh, new corporate park for uh, the, the uh, new River Electric. It's going to be a loop there. So it's a that, circle. Is that something just administratively we do, or is that in the zoning? That's some, well, I think it's the zoning code do. doesn't decide make decisions. Well, I mean, on... is it is it in any written? code in Johnstown or is that just something administratively? I'm Could not be, sure. Bailey. I'm not sure if he's had it put in or not. I'm not in charge of that, the yeah. utilities code. It's doing our engineers. Okay. So the engineers the require code? it. But it's we like, require it. To, we tell the engineers we want the loop. So, and they, and they design it that way. Or they tell the developer it's got to be loop. They just comply, but it's not written in here anyway. It could be. I, I, well, there, I there is a utilities code, Bailey says. Okay. Well, as long as it's written yeah, it's, somewhere. I, I don't mean, know I just if want it is. It in there somewhere. I, I don't know if it. it is. The I wouldn't want to give you any utilities that I didn't have to. Johnstown Point wasn't happy about it, but they did it. I wouldn't right. either. Yeah. It's a lot more water line. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you look at our ordinances online there's stuff in the ordinances that we don't have that we're not like the administrative code we're not change, we're not changing that or like the traffic code that's all stuff that we're not doing we're doing the planning and zoning code right so there's a streets utilities and public services code but i'm not in charge of and that's not our jurisdiction right well i, I get that but i'm just you send an email to the utilities commission and safety commission. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Ben's on it. What? <laughs> you brought up a commission and I said, I guarantee you're on. Or he was. <laughs> or was. Um, no guy. When you, you were talking about uh, dedicating space for schools, right? Right. Uh, that's coming up in section 38 when you talk about. I just meant I know that we require that, so I was trying to make sure we require you all utilities. <laughs> you know I mean? Sewer lines expensive. Yeah. 
Storms okay. are super expensive. So you're using the school. As just an just that example, yeah. right? Because I know, like where I live, there is no storm anywhere, and everything floods. So it's like, might as well. Yeah. Make somebody else put it in because it's not cheap. Had a splash pad. <laughs> right that in splash there. Splash pad should be everywhere. <laughs> as I said on Facebook last you week. You were hanging your hat on that one. I am hanging my hat on a splash pad. We will have one somewhere. <laughs> well, we'll just get a sprinkler and put it at the dog park. You can splash away in there. I will donate that. If I don't get a splash pad somewhere, I will donate the sprinkler to the dog park. And they're putting that down. Anything else for PUD? Uh, we'll go ahead and open the public comment on PUD. My name is Jim Hill. I think I zoomed in once and explained what uh, my purpose was. Uh, to, to reiterate, I a um, longtime member of the community, except for a couple of years in the Army. Um, I chaired the Charter Commission in 1997. I was on a charter review in 2008, 2018. The Police Advisory Committee, um, 99 to 2005, I was sitting up there planning and zoning for about eight years uh, back in the 70s and 80s. And I worked on a ton of school levies, an awful lot. Um, the primary purpose is that I truly want with this new ordinance not to happen what is happening next to our property, the Concord Court. From what I understand, most of you have seen it. Um, if not, take a look at it at night with the carnival lights being strung up. Um, it's not very becoming. Um, it damaged, in my opinion, the value of our property and the property next next to it, and even in the neighborhood. Um, there is something dealing with conformity and harmony within the neighborhoods. I think that should, should very much be a part of this if it's not. Um, so anyway, I say all that, but that's where, where I'm, my drive is, is to, to make sure that uh, with this new ordinance that it's tight, there's no workaround. There's no no way that somebody would say, well, go ahead and do it like this or or whatever. Um, the one thing that I did bring up to, I know a couple of you, uh, I don't know the other three, and to most of council, um, and talking to them privately, is I think we need a code enforcer. Um, someone separate from zoning that can go out there and look and see where is this going after zoning has permitted the uh, the item, whatever it might be. And then that person goes out there and said, well, now show me exactly where you're gonna put it. And yes, you can do it. No, you can't. Um, that's that's something that um, would would take it a, a step further in, in making sure that some items are, are done properly in the way that they should be. Um, the other thing I was ready today to talk about PUD. Um, I'm really ready to talk about a lot of it, but I'm not going to belabor <laughs> you, you folks. But I do want to say what I want to say, though, in the other parts. I, I do want to make it better You, based on experience or whatever. I'm not trying to do your job. I, I've zoomed in a couple of times. I, I know you're more than capable of doing this. Um, my PUD section is 29. Um, I don't know what happened. I, I see it's 28 now. I don't know whether it's the same. Some of it looked the same from the distance. It looked like it was about the same. I So I don't know that really what I'm, I'm saying it hasn't already been changed. And maybe what I need to do is to look at it, which I don't know where it's at, Bailey, exactly. 
Yeah, um, that was a mistake because we're currently in office changing over from one file storage place to another file storage place. So the old link doesn't work. Your beauty is, is basically the same, except for that we removed a chapter in 28. And so we just moved beauty up to 28. Um, but I will make sure that I share this online again in a new link. So it's on, it's going to be on the site website. Um, it'll be shared out probably in an agenda. Normally we don't put drafts on the website just because they change so often. Right. right. Jim, we did make some changes at the last meeting. Um, one of the last meetings on some of these parts for PUD um, that I think Bailey just went through by and large though, I think the majority of the the content should be about the same from what you have. Other yeah, the content's pretty much the same. Mostly what we added is, so we added a couple of things that are required of an applicant when they apply for a preliminary development plan. And then we added a lot of stuff on the planning and zoning commission part. So like what they would consider while they're reviewing it. Right, because I, I looked at the current one and saw that there were some things on there. And then we added two or more automobile entry and exit points are required unless approved by planning and zoning commission, no single family structure, which we just did today. So you were here for that one. 20% um, of the open, so we are requiring a minimum of 45% of the gross land area developed um, to be open space and 20% of that open space must be usable and accessible. Cause you know, sometimes you get people that try and say this stormwater pond is open space. Uh, let's see, what else did we change? I don't think that we changed anything else that was major. Well, some of the items that I was referring to was, was setbacks. Um, and actual some kind of uh, standards, minimum standards of, of some type, but you know, PUD, does allow, uh, and Concord Crossing is a perfect example of that. On the corner, there's a there's a lot with a large side lot, and about the space of this platform up here for a backyard, <laughs> and and so it doesn't it does not conform, but yet that's where the house was. The the developer said we can do it. Planning said. We can do it, so they did it. So at this board, uh, and not the board that I was yeah. on either. Okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure that. Yeah. <laughs> that. But those are the things I know that can happen, yeah. and that uh, that do happen. But the the other thing is it's some kind of a standard because it the permitted uses and conditional uses there it rolls over on several districts, and there's several different things can fit in there and also the uh, setbacks and who makes those decisions and when and how's that how's that going to be done now when it comes down to to the setbacks um there's there's an awful lot of things in there that i think not not tonight but at a later time dealing with accessory uses and structures that really truly needs to be tightened up and it also needs definitions to where there's there's no question in someone's mind as to what what's what so it, it won't be um, slipped and all of a sudden you come up with a uh, with something that doesn't look good. Um, so anyway, um, I, I did not have a whole lot with that parking street width <clears throat> um, was something that I also, and the in egress and, <clears throat> and ingress, um, three dwellings per lot, per, per acre rather, and a 20, lot minimum or 20 acre minimum for um, the uh, to make it a PUD unless you folks uh, waive that. I think that's where we we came in with 20 20 acres 
that's yeah that's what's here but i i think you're i i think it says in here that you could you could waive that if all the uh if there's a development of all the property abutting to it was developed um another thing dealing with the with the, the actual public hearing it says uh in mine 2912 f a list of all property owners within 200 feet from the proposed site. I, I didn't quite understand the 200 feet. I don't know where this came from. And by the way, where did this come from? Did this, did this come from a, a city or a town? It was written by a, the original version of this was written by a contractor who does a lot. His name was, what was his name? Just trying to remember. Tom. He does. He did a lot of. He does a lot of zoning for a lot of different municipalities, but it's been edited so much and changed so much that I don't know. I don't. I wasn't here when he did this, and I don't know what he put in and what has been changed since he's been here. It's Jim and in the works. Jim, his name is uh, Jim Hartzler. Yeah, and, and I, I, I was, I was thinking more that it came from a city and you pulled it yeah, and then edited it no, according to. No, he, he actually. Guys. This is his thing. He teaches this. He actually teaches at a high state university, and then he contracts on the side to help communities rewrite their zoning. Um, it was outsourced ten years ago, and it's been chopped up for ten years and continued. Well, I, I couldn't. I did not understand the two hundred feet. I I don't I don't get that at all. Do you think it should be more or? Well, I let's let's take the rice property over here. And, and look at 200 feet from where the development was going to be, who's going to be excluded that should be included in that notification and being notified. Well, I think, I think the 200 feet came from what we have now is adjacent property owners. And so, you know, 200 feet might be more than adjacent property owners. Whereas if we take it back to adjacent property owners, that might also limit people. Oh, so okay. 200 feet would include adjacent and extend a little bit. Possibly, kind of depending possible. on how large the adjacent land is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me, I, I, I want to, I want to understand. This is a PUD 20 acres and you're dealing with 200 feet. I'm, I'm not getting that. I'm getting it. If there's a variance. Yes. I, that I, I get, that's going to take in some people. I don't get it with a PUD, that I don't get. Well, that would be people who get the certified letter. It would still be a public meeting. Anyone could attend. It's just the 200 feet. Right, but he's saying, get... so you're, you're saying if the, for your case, the rice farm, and you get across the road, you might touch your property maybe. 200 feet you know, well and some people you have the you, you have the of property since you, you have the basin there. over there you have the basin over there that uh that it's going to extend to to no one so yeah i mean i'm i'm just using that i'm using it as a pud the variance i understand it better for a variance but again what are we doing taking the tape measure out i i don't think so um you you take raccoon ravine those are larger lots. You want somebody across from you or, or this way, and you're doing a variance here, that person may not know about it. It's an open meeting, but who's gonna know about it? So the more people that know, the better. And I totally That's agree it. with that. Yeah, we could I, go I wider. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. So is there, a, is there a different suggestion than using feet? I mean, so we could make it extended to, a thousand feet or two thousand feet or what are there any other ideas i guess and you're talking about property owners jason property so owners jason the street you're talking about uh um, property owners typically gets enough people between that and it being a public meeting that word gets around johnstown quick hey jim the way that's done is it's done as the contiguous property owners and as far as measuring we do measure we have an eagle view which measures it? Well, I I just feel it. I I didn't I didn't grasp the two hundred feet for for a PUD. Is all I I. I Would you think maybe it's uh, better worded as 
Well, okay, let's let's take take Leafy Dale. Yeah. Who would have been notified down there when when that was developed, when it was brought before? And I'm talking, you know, we we do not have a, a a local newspaper anymore. Most people do not take newspapers anymore, and so I'm I'm looking at how is this going to get out? Yes, word does get out. Do you hand carry? Is it the responsibility of who? And and then and then what? I'm just I'm just bringing up that the 200 feet doesn't doesn't isn't big enough. Maybe I just don't think. especially with no newspaper. I think it's important to cover more people. I think that's a good point. So cl uh, closest abutting uh, property owners, if the immediate adjacent property is you know a right of way, a street, or a public space, so that that would extend it. You know, you can make an argument and say for the property across the street that the abutting property is public use because it's a street. But the other side of the street, you've got a row of homes along Concord right. uh, that would be defined as the closest um, non publicly owned uh, entity, but closest adjacent. You go further down Concord, you have you have the the catch basin. Yeah, there, and that's it would, wide open, and there's no no one. The idea is yeah. you want to create a a ring of some kind of whoever is going to be closest to that from a private ownership standpoint to give them public uh, a, a public notice that there's going to be development adjacent to you, even if it's across a shared exactly. space. Exactly, because you don't want somebody coming in here and say, "Why didn't somebody right. tell me?" Right, it's right in my back door worried. and next next door across the street yeah. and no one notified me yeah i think if you're doing if they have if you can look at it from above and do a map around yeah that's what we we, well, we actually a way wider area we actually we, rural, pro our rural property to look up all the adjacent properties when you could just literally put a ring around it and say everybody that's inside we actually everybody require that with the application farm or something and you know your backyard looks across at it so is it feasible for Jim for these for Jim to to figure out all the? We don't figure it would out. Be, it would be the developer. Be the, the developer. applicant figures it out. The applicant has to do that for us. He sends me the names and address of all the contiguous property owners. So you want, and then I I do double check them though. Five hundred feet, a thousand feet from the property yeah. line. Yep. That way you guarantee that ring. And um, then it gets all the people that may still have to look at it that their property doesn't touch it. You have a right. if you have a you have a large yard and if I look through your yard and yeah. I'm gonna look at it too, I might have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. So it, it would in this case it would have extended all the way down, you know, really outlining that entire basin, including the condos and stuff like that, even on the back end, because you would include everybody around. If you're a condo area. and you're up above, if you, you know, if you or if you have any height to your building, you're gonna see it. Thousand feet is what we're thinking. Yeah. Especially if if you're gonna do I mean I mean absolutely if you you're gonna do it by looking down from a map. It's super easy to pull it. Jim, do you think that makes sense? A thousand feet? Well, I or you you'd rather have the language all abutting properties. Um, what was he, what you said? Publicly, <laughs> non publicly owned. You just want the privately owned uh, homes that are going to be adjacent to it that are going to have to deal with whatever is going in there to have public notification, and you want it to be surrounding the proposed development area. The call the sac. Um, we would have been we did get notified for rice property what about across the street how are they how about the the people on the end so uh, again it i and i don't want to i don't want to make this suggestion like because i think you you guys can can figure that this out but i i don't think you want to leave anybody out is the key the more people you bring in, and I think the justification, even from even if you use stormwater management as a justification for public health, safety, and wellness, is why would you extend it beyond 200 feet? I think you can use stormwater management as as a, a, a rationale for making it a wider uh, 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 scoop than than you would otherwise, especially if it's a, an upstream and it's affecting people in a downstream. Yeah, yeah, they go with everybody. I does. think it's a good idea. I there, think there's another way to do it, and I've seen it. And Ron, you, you know what I'm going to say is you have the developer put up a sign, a 32 square foot sign on the property, a V shaped sign, and everybody that lives in that neighborhood is going to drive by that sign every day. 
Everybody else does that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah most of Delaware yeah, County, they put does that. a little sign it's up and down. saying this yeah, property is being considered really for small. zoning hey, change. New Albany. Yeah. New Albany. They're New about Albany, the size I think of they're 12 by 12. Yeah. They need to be 32 10, square feet. Yeah. 10, 10 foot, 10.5. <laughs> Um, another thing, and another thing dealing with uh, the criteria for planning and um, zoning, it speaks to the public hearing. And it says before making this recommendation as required in section 29.14, the commission must go through. And then it says in making its recommendation, it doesn't say what the recommendation is, um, I look at planning and zoning should have the ability to approve and maybe it's changed. I, maybe I spoke out of turn here to approve it, uh, recommend approval to council, uh, recommend approval with modifications or, or other conditions or disapprove it. I mean, that's basically council is looking from, from zoning to say yes or no. You're doing the homework. You're doing the, the grunt work of this before it goes to, to council. And not that council shouldn't do their due diligence, but it's, it's you know, it, it comes right here first. So... I, I did not see that. It says recommendation. That's all it says, I, I believe, is recommendation. And then... Did you see what section that is? It's 28.14 or 28.15. I think that's kind of what we do, though. We would approve or approve with conditions mm -hmm. or deny. Yeah. And like I said, it may it may be there. The, my version of it, <clears throat> maybe you guys may have already changed that or made that... Uh, the specific wording is the same, but I think the interpretation of the board is that, that those are the three outcomes that the recommendation could entail. And, and do you see it in writing? No. Not in this section specifically, but I know we have it in other sections. Not to say we uh, oh, well, that, that's, but Ben, that's my, that's my yeah. point. Yeah. It's we not there. A... Somebody's going to come and say, that's I was sitting that. up there once, not here, at the old, the old, and the, uh, and the developer wanted to put a trailer court down by off of Edwards Road. Well, you know, I got the telephone calls just like everybody else did. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not, not at all. Well, very angry. Then came back with apartments. Well, got some more phone calls. No, you're not. We're not gonna go that route either. That's when the attorney came in and the threats came in. Well, finally, I believe he needed either seven or nine variances or the either seven or nine houses that he built down there. Because that's how, that's the, that's the power. But if it's there, if it's in writing, then you, you can do that. Because the next section is... Um, so should we add, do you guys, we could, we could add that language in there, right? No, that's not. Bailey, let's add approve, disapprove or approve with conditions. Let's just make approve, that change. Approve, deny, or approve with conditions. And before we go on to, give me one, let her do this real quick. Oh. I don't like to miss things as we go. Did, did we get the change in there about the 1,000 feet, Bailey? Did we change that to 1,000? No, we're going to do the sign. We didn't decide what the distance was. Let's decide right now. Let's decide 1,000. Um, Let's make the change because we'll forget about it if we don't do it now. <laughs> I don't. I think you, you should look at having the developer or the person that's making the ask provide a sign. Why don't you do both? When you get into 1,000 feet. Uh, we just, it's too many people. You're talking about hundreds of certified letters then in some situations. All time sending certified okay. Letters. Well, let's change it to um, a sign. If you do uh, sign, it has been, to be on, on any any road that's going to look at it. Should we do a it's sign and then on. use Ben's language about the um, properties adjacent to right of 
public areas and it's stuff. always adjacent properties and then yeah the sign but, but but there's also but ben had some language he suggested that took in where there's a public space or so it goes to a private all private ownerships even if there's a public space that's in the all middle private, non-publicly owned right. say it again just non non publicly owned because then like i said you could claim that concord road language, you know. is an adjacent in your mic so are you would you guys be comfortable with that and the sign yeah yeah yes can we make that change bailey what's the wording <laughs> you get this man <clears throat> so this which section is this going under we have this under i make a suggestion yeah i think it's being recorded that's fair <laughs> But this that this is this is going under contents was twenty eight point one two. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, something to the effect of uh, must provide uh, uh, a sign on uh, any uh, road frontage for the proposed development. How big? How big of a sign? Is it? I'm said thirty. Uh, Thirty-two square feet. Four bait. Right. Done. Um, and then from a certified letter standpoint, and a sign and an it would be. You read that one. Uh, you don't read the yard signs. I can't remember. To Jim's point, it's being recorded, but but some something to the effect of, however, I ordered before that all, uh, uh non-publicly owned, uh, adjacent properties relative to each uh, lot line. So, that, I mean, the, again, the intent is to create that, to create that range. Okay, Jim, we're back on, we're back to you. Okay. Um, on, on, on mine 29.16 action by city council, it says following approval by city council, the subject property shall be considered zone P. And, and that's that's a true statement, but I don't know that. It says upon the recommendation by commission, city council shall review and take action. Um, if approved is what you're trying to get at. Yes, if approved. Not following approval because it denotes um, a, a, a positive outcome regardless of the recommendation right it's not it's not going to be zoned if they if they turned it down if if approved this is the outcome if denied i think we all know it exactly that's fair <clears throat> so getting getting back the I, I did not find that there's either minimums or for setbacks for lot sizes for the dwellings. Um, and, and I don't know whether I'm wrong here. I, I don't know that I've concentrated an awful lot on some of this. There's other parts that I I dug into much deeper, but I I think there's there's there might be or might not be something there that uh, that you may want to look at um, the setbacks in SR. There's two different setbacks on the side. Which one are you going to use? It's 20 foot. There's a mistake. There, there's uh, there's so I I mean what are, what are you going to to use on that? And so I I think that that. Um, just some kind of basic standards that a developer can take a look at and say, okay, we have to go this, because you already have it, three houses per acre. You're already doing that. And you're already saying that PUD has to be 20 acres. So there is there is some of that. So do we have specific setbacks in, on the PUD? No. no. That was... You probably remember, Ron, all the conversations that we had about PUDs and correct me 
my feeling from the previous conversations that I've been a part of and, and heard is the desire to keep a PUD somewhat mostly open because of its uh, accessibility to be used in a variety of situations. That's the creativity and the diversity of the housing stock that could be applied. And that's why at this point, it's been left the way that it is. I think we've, there've been a lot of conversations about setbacks and lot sizes and how that applies, but does that go contrary to what the point of the PUD is? And to that end, I think then a lot of the conversation went back to, you know, really if you default to the main requirement being the amount of open space, that in and of itself would almost really be that driving baseline behind what a developer would be able to get out of any parcel at any given time. Because then, you know, you'd really be limited to, you know, do you want larger lot sizes and larger homes to give you a higher return based on what you paid for it? Do you want to try and push density and get it in there? But that open space metric, from my understanding is what we said, well, we can talk about these all day long, but that's why we have the design standards for the other, other areas, but the UD really driven by the open space requirement, which would then dictate really how many how many homes somebody could be able to put in. So do we want the PUD to be vague? I mean, because yeah. otherwise if you pigeonhole it and it's the same as other every other do we have anything to protect ourselves from the from the scenario that he brought out with the weird side yard? Well, that's what yeah. the, the review yeah, process is. Yeah, you don't no. approve it. I mean, at the end of the day, we still have to approve everything. So they're gonna have to give you. They're gonna have to show you what every. Yeah. They have to sign in. A, they would have to sign a developer's agreement with council. And you'll see on even the even the sketch plot, it'll say in there what the minimum setbacks are for each section of a PUD. So they would they would be giving us what their proposal. So basically, is. the process the yeah. process is different. It's the process yeah. is instead of having it in writing, it's reviewing everything visual basically as it's the developer the... agreement it's the developer okay. agreement as it comes in either okay. it's a part of the annexation or it's not uh, and if it's not then it comes in under rural residential which is three acres per unit and then you start from there or if you have that developer's agreement that's what facilitates everything coming in it's most likely coming in as a pud at whatever density level and whatever design criteria that you talked about but the pud was meant to fill in the gaps of whatever the current code doesn't meet and make it a little bit more flexible but so you're here you. I, and and i i agree with with everything you know, that's not a, a sticking point with with me by any means um if my frontage is much smaller than what my neighbors is that doesn't that's not going to change what my standards and what I can can't do on that particular lot right and that's and I think that's can come in that comes into play someplace down the road sure. which we'll talk about some other time so anyway talk about lot coverage is every time yeah yeah so I I think that's the that's another like I said that's another that's on for tonight that's the next section I think yeah which is lot coverage it's coming up we got three sections for tonight um okay i'll get it <laughs> we appreciate your help especially someone with your background and knowledge you know we we definitely appreciate the input it's um we need all the help we can get I, I invite all of you down to to take a look next door from from either it, 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 more than welcome to come in into the house come on on the property and see because what what you have and what we have now um we we've never had any problems with neighbors i've i've always said if i have problems with you i'm going to come to you i'm not going to yell to other neighbors or go to police i'm going to come to you and i i expect the same in return and in this particular situation where we had to put up a fence put up some um, shrubbery just to, to kind of block it and to let them know where the line is. Um, it's you don't want this again someplace else. You do not want this again. <laughs> this is not something that's going to be and there's more to come there too, by the way. They do want more. They want a garage and a, an apartment above. And <laughs> 
they're, they're <laughs> expecting to get it. And they want to put concrete up to the property line. <laughs> they won't get the apartment above the garage. Nope. Oh, <laughs> I mean, uh, that's, that's the, uh, that's why you, you want to put a stop. And that's one of the reasons why I go ahead and do this. <clears throat> so I promise that won't be brought up a whole lot, but. Oh, this is good. So it's Keep a going. sore, it's a sore thought. We appreciate you. And now that we're back in public sessions, it's good to have people here. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is, to be honest with you, this is what I wanted. Yeah. I, I, because if I'm wrong on something, or if I misinterpreted something, I, I want to know. I, I don't want to try to sort it out because I, you know, so. Jim, do anyway. you, if, do you want to sit over here with the microphone so you don't have to stand up there at the podium? No, I, I like being over. Okay. Like this. I, right. I like. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then I emailed you the link to the. Are you good with the 20%? I was going to call it. I don't know why, but like for some reason, when I just looked at it, it like didn't sit well with me. I had 50%. It felt low. As the usable space for common open space. Yeah, I thought, it, I thought it, it was more than 20. I had 45%. Total. And then 50% usable. Yeah. yeah. So actually, what is 50% of that. Yeah. Because I thought we went like back and forth because you could basically be like, why and do we do all that? these beautiful trees are here and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was probably just me being confused because half of 45 is around 20. So it yeah. was probably me doing that. I just like, I don't know why when I saw it, I was like, that looks awfully low. Yeah. And to the point, yeah, because the minimum is 45. Yeah. So yeah. if that they do it 55, then you want. That must have been. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the last. 50% like of 45 is yeah. 20. It's <laughs> all good. That's a good catch. Yeah, I just like, it just didn't it seemed really light well let me and i want to ask this question because i we continue to bring up these things as we go along through this document on what may be lacking in our current code um i'm tempted to ask we add in the sign requirement now yeah no yeah to our yeah. current code yeah and we send it to pud or to everything <clears throat> Bailey, that in here too. you'd yeah. start with annexation for annexation they would have to have a sign and then when it, when it was time, once the annexation was completed and they wanted to bring forth what they wanted to do from the development developer side, and if there was going to be letters sent out, you have a sign again. Yeah, I mean, they or, just did or, it to me in Harrison Township for conditional use permit. Or zone or zoning I mean, change. they put up a sign. Now the sign was like this big, but. Yeah, that's why I'm saying the 32 square foot. You watch everything basically that we require certified letters for. Oh, okay. You're serving it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot out there for development. Are you doing different ordinance for each one chapter? No, just do it all in the same ordinance. Yeah, like it. Okay, yeah, I think you just do one and just like it statement. You do the uh, uh, strike out and italicize. But, but here, so here's one thought on that if we had a conditional use, like the the house in Ryan's neighborhood that wanted to have like a dog grooming. Remember that girl who's in here? She would have to put up a four by eight sign. Yeah. No. no. It seems a little bit over, but well, that's what we're talking about. For me, it's for an We require her to send certified letters to, I mean, did we require her to send certified letters to adjacent homeowners? For that, her HOP? For home occupations? On, I don't remember. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember. Well, let's double check. I don't think so. Should. I don't think so. I okay. Think did, one of the questions I straight asked her was, what do your neighbors think about it? Yeah. I, I think she's think talking you, about you're, it. You're right. We did send certified letters because now I remember a lady that called me about it. You said we did? Debbie Russell. Because one of my questions was, what did the neighbors think about it? And she said they were all on board. So no it. sign yeah. for eight for home occupation. Well, you and I can, you and I yeah. can go through it. You could, you that could. was one of my biggest points in that whole thing was, have the neighbors been notified what do they think of it but if we can get so let's let's come back to it but next meeting if you after you guys go through it and bailey and let's see which ones are exceptions yeah you'd have to be like zone because i think it generally it's just it's i think generally signage is best there's a few like that example where i think it might not be you could put a sign out but you don't have to do a four by eight yeah you could do a yard sign for yard like sign. a map change yeah i think that's that about be i think there's let's go with that so in some of them they like they, it's applicable yeah let's do a yard sign size and and 
develop building development there's a sign place right big ones yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. there was. <laughs> he lives. He lives right down the middle. Oh, there's Tony. Tim. He's right there. You just you go right. His notification is an issue. Do it because you know, like, there's no newspaper. It just really is. Just, you know, you know what, Jesse? Why don't you start a, a Facebook page? Just <laughs> Jim Leonard puts it out on the Facebook page you know, within minutes. I'm, I'm not on Facebook yet. I'm gonna be on soon. It's in contract. <laughs> with debate because if you think about it like in new, new albany so you probably when you drive right. down 16 yeah, all the time there's a small they have so zoning back, change like yeah, they do every back other to, week uh, over there delaware county required we're gonna bring that up for next meeting is that what we're yes. saying yeah so back to our zoning because we want to keep rolling along here i'm gonna go to the restroom again 745 is there anything else on pud are we done so did we talk about, what did we talk about last time? Two entrances? Mm -hmm. That made it into there? Mm -hmm. yeah. It was good. Uh, Most everything that was in there stayed about the same with the exception of some of the criteria and some of what's required by the applicant beforehand. I'm good with it because you don't want to overburden UD because otherwise you're just in the, killing the flexibility. Some of the bigger things too were just what, what our criteria was to make sure that it matches what's there right now and stuff yep. like that here in a forward. And, all right, so we are into additional district standards. Article 30, general development standards. That's because I have that old document too. I printed it out at the beginning of this. Well, you were right. It's just part four is additional zoning requirements and then Art, the article underneath is general development standards. I made myself a nice little binder at the beginning. All right. Uh, you got notes if you want me to start. We know we're talking about lot coverage. Yeah, if you want to start. Um, and some of this may just be education as we're walking through it, but uh, front yards, um, front yard depth should be measured from the right of way of the street or highway or property line. Why do we, why do we even note the right of way uh, as of the street? Is that common? Because we talk about it being, which is the most restrictive. It depends on when people, when the lot was created, some people's lots go, some people's property lines technically go to the middle of the street right. and some people's do not. And it depends on when the lot was created because it, there was a change at some point in, the, in how it was done. Technically they should donate that piece to the right of way. Well, yeah, but it doesn't always. There. Yeah. Which is why we say the right of way or the property line, whichever is most restrictive. Um, and then my next note is lot coverage. Any other notes before we get to lot coverage? And, uh, and architectural features. So you're allowed to go up to two feet from the lot line with an architectural feature. I had that as a note too. I think we need to increase that because if it's uh, within five feet, uh, it has to be fire rated. So, so five feet. So I mean, if I can't have a shed, if I have to keep a shed five feet off the property line, I should have yeah. to keep my keep everything else off the two. Five feet would work. That's a good point on the fire code. That's true. Can we go back to thirty point oh two on the corner lots? And Jim, you might wait. Have the... So should I take out so long as a minimum of two feet is maintained to any adjoining lot line? So it says. They projected the front, rear, or side yard not more than three feet, so long as a minimum of two feet is maintained. The last measurement we want to make five feet, right? Oh, that should be five feet. Is that right? It can leave the three, three feet, feet out. But you've got to, that three feet can encroach on a five foot buffer to the lot line. Okay. Keep the three feet. That's what you're project, going for. Yeah. Yeah, because if you have a canopy, it's coming out more than. 
it'll be out five, ten feet. Yeah. Okay. Good call. Well, all right. So yeah, so if you have a canopy. Roll. Yeah, so not more than three feet. comes out by the sunset or thing. Your front? It's in the backyard. Though. Oh, then you're... Yeah, so I guess it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it just says front side or rear yard. It's in the rear. Oh. Is it over the setback? No. You're good. All right. Uh, can we go back real quick to uh, 30.02 on uh, front yards and Jim, you might be able to answer this on C corner lots. It says that uh, they've got to have two, basically two front setbacks on corner lots and the other two sides and one of them must be considered the rear yard. Do we determine who gets to decide what the rear yard is? No, we don't. Uh, they can the way, decide. The way that's usually done is the architect or he does um, the building line completely around the line, the lot. And then the house has to fit within that. So it can be adjusted one way or another, but the building line on a corner lot, this, the corner is going to, uh, to be equal to the distance of the front. So if it's a 30 foot front setback, it's a 30 foot corner setback. And then it's up to the architect to design the house to fit within that, that square or rectangular or whatever the shape is. I'm worried about the rear yard though, because if it's like a rectangular lot, this is your street and this is your street. Uh huh? And he gets to determine which side the rear yard is. Well, what if he determines the shorter side is the rear yard then? And he could have a, a five foot or 10 foot rear yard, which really should be the side yard. Is there any way we could? I don't know how that? you specify. And that's kind of what Jim Hill was talking about. The, the house there that's on the corner of uh, yeah, that's what they Concord, and it, it has like a 10 foot backyard yeah. and it was approved that way. So I don't know how you determine that. I really don't know. Rolling Meadows rear yard is a little subjective on some of those houses. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after they remodel them and then sell them twice. Because sometimes the rear yard works out better a different way. Builders like it because then he can put a bigger, wider house yeah. and then say, Well, this is my rear yard, even though it should be the side yard. And I don't know how you would. Well, and how those houses were built in the 50s, they were a certain way, and then they've been remodeled twice, and now the rear yard is something totally different. So I don't know if it's a fixable problem, but. Have you been faced with that, Ron, in yeah. your design? How'd you handle it? We always try to push them to make the whatever the deeper side would be has to be the rear yard. Okay. Uh, it's probably not the fixable because every situation would be different. Different. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you could fix it. For a new build, I haven't been faced with that at all. They they've all all the lots, the corner lots were always the bigger lots. Yeah. I just could but, you put in there that the this part has to is required to be the rear yard. But what if it doesn't work due to other natural features? I don't know if it's a fixable problem because I guess you could say that a variance would be required to establish which would be considered a rear yard. And Do we need to fix this? Is it this that big of a problem? Probably not. There's probably five houses in Johnstown that it's probably. Although he's got that situation. <laughs> yeah. All right, I just brought it up to see if there was a solution, but it, there might not be a good way to go through. Probably not a good one. And the house he's talking about was Jim Leonard's house. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, he was the sec second or third owner. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I think to the architectural feature piece that we were just talking about, I think we want to take out the uh, the rear yard piece of that, don't we? Yeah, we probably should. Because you're going to have a canopy on that rear yard. It's really just the front and the side. As long as that's maintained, the rear yard should have a deep enough setback that five feet should be 
be maintainable. But if not, um, right? So just front or side. Yeah, for our neighborhood. Yeah, for all the neighborhoods here. I was like, I know some communities where you would have that problem. Sure. Like, if it was a neo traditional, you might have that problem. But really, if you got, I mean, if you got a ten foot patio in the back of your house and you got a canopy that goes over it. Yeah. But like, there's everybody in Rolling Meadows has has that you know the lean to off the back of the house. Yeah, and you can build you can oh, build your you patio. You talking about when they put the grass in the back? <laughs> the the earth part, what's on the ground, you can build that to the lot line. Sure. But technically, you're not allowed to have a roof within five foot of the lot line. Yeah. Take out back. Yeah, take out back. Got that, Bailey? Yep. It's your backyard. You do, for the most part, what we just mentioned. Somewhat. Let's talk about lot coverage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After that segue, there's somewhat of what you want with the backyard. <laughs> Let's talk about a lot coverage. You get a shed and a pool. A lot more. My question about yacht, uh, lot coverage and talk about open decks with no roof, porches with no roof, steps with no roof. So the roof is the common denominator that we're saying denotes what uh, is counted toward lot coverage and what isn't. And that's what you considering a roof. That's well. what Jim Hill has next door to him. They have a deck connects to the house right it connects to the above ground pool right it goes completely around it so yeah. using a hypothetical situation like that um i, I don't know how you don't count that as luck coverage. well that's i'm it's wanting easy. to change the baseline here well, and well, so they're arguing on the pool because above we ground this conversation right? that happened. so the pool did not count the above ground pool did not count the lot coverage right no. right which I don't understand that that for sure. Well, I think we, I want you'd count. have to re reword that definition to something that stays up. Like if you have one of those, like the one that blows up and comes down. Well, if you have versus, a temporary pool, well, my name like is a temporary pool. It's inflatable. I know but this pool has no foundation. We sitting on the we, ground. Found, there's a found, there's a base. Sand. I mean, there's a sand base it's on sand, that. right? That's not what we consider. Yeah, but that it's would not be ground. considered a foundation. That, it has that support type of pool yeah. is, is anchored, and okay. there's there's an actual. It's not an in ground pool. It's an above ground pool, and they put a sand. <laughs> there are portions of it. Well, there's <laughs> a there's a difference though between yeah, like a hard sided one and like do an we, index. Do we consider garages in lot coverage? We should. Yeah. Yes. We should. I we don't do. know why garages is included in this. First of all, because we can take that out right away. Yeah, but I can have so a shed is counted in lot coverage, right? Yes. No. 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 Um, as long as it doesn't no. have a foundation. I don't think so. Oh, that is. You can put them. Yeah. So I can. <laughs> I have. I mean, I have a it's twenty by. I have like a twenty by fifteen shed. That thing is huge. It, I didn't put it. And, 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 and it's came with the house. Is it sitting on runners or can? Or does it have a? It's foot sitting on. Well, it was sitting on blocks till. 50 years after they build it, now it's well, in the ground. But so you're allowed what one accessory structure? Two. Two. So it's, I guess a shed, if you define that as an accessory structure. Yes, a shed should be an accessory structure. Well, it right? is. Well, you have to define the shed too, because if you have one of those like little plastic huts that you put. We count accessory structures as sheds, gazebos. Yeah, but what's houses. the, what are you defining as a shed versus like a, like yeah, a, they have those like rubber a storage made plastic. They have those rubber made yeah, plastic think, shed things and it's, it's got a roof, but I mean, it's not any bigger than this. Well, we did, we just got some new information on that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> if it's over 200 square feet. Okay. We can, issue, I can issue a shed permit up to 200 square foot. That's shed. what I was going to say, because anything over 200 square foot, I issue a shed permit, but it has to go to the County and it has to be inspected. Okay. Because that's how a deck is. Anything, well, any deck over right. 200 square feet. And if it's above four foot tall or if it's anchored into the, into the ground. Yeah, like you should put well, it, we, we're allowed to inspect unattached decks up to 200 square right. feet. Unattached. Right. And as soon as I anchor it to the house, even if it's under that, you have to inspect it. No, the county has to inspect it. Yeah, the county. Yeah, the county. Mm. So... About floating decks. That that's what my argument was with well, sheds, decks so. are I mean sheds are included in this as, as counting. Coverage. Yeah. 
The calculation of lot coverage shall include principal and accessory structures, decks, porches, and or steps covered by a roof, but shall not include open decks with no roof, with no roof, porches with no roof, or steps with no roof. So sheds included in that, in the new writing. And when we calculated- There's no mention of pool. Uh, that, that, I, mean, I met with Yaz, and Jim knows, doesn't know that, but we were at that property. We did calculate his shed into the lot coverage and it was still not even close. Yeah, sheds should be counted. Any pool that is, I mean, an above ground pool, anything everybody knows specific. what we're talking about. Yeah. There is a pool that's intended to be permanent, then there's a pool that's intended to cover. Right. So, so if it's intended to be permanent, that should count. So what do you want, what do you want me to say? Perm, like, permanent yeah, it, would just have, it would have to be, it would have, we could look up the definition for it, but there's a difference like, they have those the pools that like should be yeah. in text or yeah. like the when metal you pour frame. the water out, she yeah. it goes down. Yeah. If it has like posts that hold it up, like my neighbor's probably has sand maybe under there. So, so it, it stays up all year long. And all it is is like 12 metal poles that go around it. Yeah. It has no hard sides, right? Like, but it doesn't come down. But so it, but it's the winter. The one they delineation use. we could make is inflatable pools are temporary and every any anything that's not couldn't besides, I just say permanent pools? Well, we have hybrid pools, which Ron has one. You're in, you're in the ground, what, two foot on yours? Uh, about three, yeah. Three foot in the you ground and- down. No. That should be covered. Right. I would say his is permanent. Yeah. Okay. We could make it more specific by to just saying any, any pool, inflatable. any pool with the exception of inflatable pools. That's what it should say. That's really specific. Yeah, yeah but those metal frame ones are, they, they come down, they last like maybe a year or two. No, they last longer than that. Like fourteen thousand. That's permanent. If it lasts two years, that's permanent in my mind. No, I'm talking about like the fifteen hundred dollar, well, four or five hundred dollar cold. I lived, I lived in my house for three. Hey, but Ryan, that, that should count against it. If it's not an inflatable, it should count against you. It should count they against yeah, it. They don't take their pool down. What do you think, Ben? You look conflicted. You want me to show you a picture? But they're not really. I'll they can blow away, and we, like they can fall. I mean, they're not. We're talking about percentages here. If you don't have the per land, if you don't have the grant, if you don't have room for it, then you shouldn't have that pool. If it's leave that pool up for two years either the difference of this that mm -hmm. stays Do we up. require pool permits for those require, you take the water out there portable pool does not require any inspections like from anybody or any permit yeah yeah that one These other or ones. any that permit that does it actually anchor it so if it's over 100 square foot we permit it but you don't have to take that down and it requires a fenced in yard the lockable gate so that well, should just, like that I'm, should be the- should be counted then in lot coverage. Any pool with the exception of inflatable pools should be counted. So maybe that's we I should just too. go on a square footage. Then. That's, well, there is- I think we should count any pool with the exception of inflatable pools. I think that's it, yeah. If we're gonna if we're gonna require a pool permit, do you want to do those, that or do you want to do square footage? It says hundred. There already is a hundred square foot requirement. So it's got to be a hundred square foot. No, it Almost only all needs all a permit all all if it's all over a hundred square feet. Okay. But, but it, so if it's under a hundred square you foot, buy, you know, like it says on the box how many square foot it is. We can find it later, I guess. You're right, but you wouldn't need a permit. So. I don't know if you can just say inflatable. Okay. I don't know what because the solution is. The other colleges have got those hard plastic sided. Well, that's what I mean, the PVC ones. That are, so, that are smaller, yeah. you know. So for me, the difficulty, because I've gone through all this a lot, is you've got to define accessory structure. Yes. And you've got to define the swimming pool. Correct. Um, yeah, it's probably a greater than, square footage probably works the best. I think square footage because is probably your best. it's more than like it. five feet. Round, like they do have seven foot ones that you blow up and drop off, but like. Because there are things missing, even when you look at private swimming pools. You know, swimming pool, um, right now we have a swimming pool as, you know, needing a, a fence if it has at least one and a half feet of water in it, which technically you can drown in things that are less than one and a half yeah. foot if you're a child, right? Water, yeah. So I defined a swimming pool as containing any non environmentally developing water of any level which if it's by rain, you know, that's fine. But if you're purposely filling a pool at any level, then it becomes a pool that somebody can drown and you gotta put a fence up. Um, you know, uh, fence should be required 
uh, and installed before any purposefully non-environmentally developing water is added. And that's a wordy definition, but it excludes rain. Anything else? You got to put up a fence, but that would include a pond, though, wouldn't it? So I can put my pool out, but I have to let. No, it this is specifically defined as a swimming pool. <laughs> I was going to say because that'd be like a koi pond. Can't call no. in the water truck. Cool. And then when you talk about accessory buildings, you know, I put down permanent accessory structures, <clears throat> including swimming pools hot tubs, and this is just me thinking, in ground or above ground, with or without a deck attached to a dwelling, detached gazebos, uh, sheds, detached you know. garages, any structure with a subgrade poured or brick stone laid foundation, from that report. animal housing exceeding a certain square footage, because we do allow some animal housing. What if the animal house gets too large? Is that something well, we consider? Yeah, you get like a dog run. Sandboxes. The animal house gets on it. Out. They go to double secret probation. Anything with subgrade anchoring. Which are temporary. Things like that. But with a swimming pool, you know, as long as you define I mean, swimming you pool, I think you can yep. include it yeah, broadly in that definition as a accessory structure. So I said, structure. I don't have an answer for this. I agree. Then you talk about accessory structure. What defines an accessory structure? Right now, the way that you read accessory structure is that I can see is that you nail a board between a house and a garage and you can say that it's attached. It's not necessarily an accessory structure. Yeah, we, we fixed that. We have fixed that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say you take out the... And the utility. Yeah, it has to have a roof. I think, but I mean, I, I, would, I would say that if you have a large deck without a covered space, you're taking up yard space. I have to agree that should be counted. It, you're saying that, and what if you have a pergola? Are you you're saying it's attached if you have a, a roof. So if you have a breezeway, basically. That would be an accessory structure. So you're saying you took out the board, like Ben was saying, if you attach it with a board? It's well, we, we have that covered in our ordinances now. It, it has to have a substantial. But what, what has to have? For the purposes of section. Connecting, okay. holding, accessory building. If it's connected, it has to have a substantial roof over the connection. You can't just, and that was tried. That's the reason it was done. On North Main, a person did that. It'd be so considered it part of the have, structure. It can't just have a breezeway over like a four foot wide sidewalk, you're saying. It can't have that. Yeah, that would be attached. It, it, it can, and it's attached. So it was attached, but. It would be attached. I'm just saying, like, if you had a floating deck in the middle of your yard with a pergola, pergola over it, and you strung lights on it. That should be considered. Yeah. Some sort of, except that should be counted in your lot coverage. Now let's take this. What if you just had a floating deck in the middle of your yard? That should be counted too. It should also be counted. It doesn't correct. matter if it's covered or not. Right now it wouldn't be covered. <laughs> right now it wouldn't be counted unless it was over 200 square feet. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And a, a, a pergola in your That's yard. People have me build decks all the time and I put them on a, concrete block and they're under four foot tall and they're smaller than yeah, 200 square 10 feet. By 10 people have me build those by, all the time. By 12. All right, so let's go back to the first step. I think we're all on board with defining swimming pool up in the top yeah. definition yeah. section, yeah, right? You got it. It's, it, is, it is lengthy, but it works. Yeah. Let's put, we're gonna add that in the- pool is in 31, I think. You guys ready to do this change? I it's, think it's all connected. That's the thing. Yeah, I know. There's Everything a lot is, of like things that need to be worked out to get yeah, to where we're going to put the definition up in the very top section under in the definition section, so it's applicable to all the sections. Ben, you're you're almost going to have to create. I, I've known about this for a long time, and it, it, it's a very difficult problem to solve. You're almost going to have to create a list and list yep. what you could possibly put in a yard, yeah. and whether it's connected or not. That's what I just read off. I mean, one, two, three on a list. And then define what those things are. And define. Yeah. The definitions are what solidifies what exactly you're talking about because right. that's what yes. carries over. So for swimming pools, I think it's 31.03, I believe. Um, but it's in there if you wanted to go to that section. Um, because the way that it's defined in this current, uh, so, so your, but your, would your definition include one of those kitty plastic yeah. pools that you get at Kroger? So I couldn't have one of those in my house for like a week. I think <laughs> it technically would. 
Yeah, but I don't know if it should. Because it's you'd have to give it a depth then. That's yeah, right. you'd have to get a fence for it. You'd either have to give it a depth, or you'd have to give it a depth or a square footage because like they had that things in the head like four foot around. Like the one you get at TSC that's nine ninety nine. Yeah, they sold my Kroger for ten bucks. Yeah. I've had those. I throw them away two weeks later. Not that, that's <laughs> not the point. The sun hits with a warp. That's not the point. Of no, that. That's no, what. I, it, yeah, but somebody, that's somebody, what's somebody tr- might get mad and try to pull it on their neighbor. I know. Like, yeah, you got a pool. Yeah. And do you count? What do you do with a swing set? Do you count that? Count a trampoline? Uh, do you count a playhouse? <laughs> Is that, well, I think, I think it depends the, on what it is. If you I have a large I think it's how it's anchored, how it's anchored, and the square footage. I think is how you a swing set. You're not going to have up. What if you buy? Well, what in thirty one point oh one, we've defined residential accessory structures including detached garages, tool and garden sheds, okay. swimming pools, and similar facilities. So in thirty under lot coverage, we say that accessory structures count in the lot coverage and so swimming pools would count what defines a swimming pool? right but that's what we're that's yeah, what that, our yeah, argument yeah, is yeah. but then we don't have to define accessory structures because it's defined in 31.01 because i don't want to stop somebody and so we'll that. need to start counting Obviously, tool and garden sheds pools. i don't want to stop that i don't want to stop correct inflatable pools about driveways no well, there's a house in Five Boy Meadows that literally has a Do we pool now? that touches the back of the house and oh, the fence. Well, at the those same aren't time. structures. I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm good with not. Here's just I'm good with not counting sidewalks and driveways. Well, right. Yeah. No. Yeah, but then you can't. How would you? How can you count a patio? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then if you're not going to count a patio, there's not a patio could be a driveway if you try. There's not a real good answer for this. Don't we have in the district standards? lot coverage for paved surfaces you can't have your lot paved over a certain you do for commercial <coughs> you, know, but you can make your driveway as big as you want basically and you can run it to the property line and run it into your front yard if well, you, you want. can't pave your whole lot that's what go i'm going to rolling meadows yeah, and tell me really you isn't know. anything yeah. to go say to rolling you meadows tell me you can't pave your whole lot there are people that have almost an entire paved area because yeah, they have there is. behind their house. Yeah. And it's two cars wide. There's, there's at least three houses that have a pole barn that takes up probably three quarters of their yard over there. Yeah. That's been paved. there for years. I think before they even had zoning. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. There's a, one house that has a, a pole barn that's three times bigger than the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the problem, the yeah. biggest problem you're going to run into is on new, on anything new, it's easy to police, but like, my detached garage from the front of my garage to the sidewalk 75 feet okay so i would run into a problem if i have if i make mine more than exactly what for 16 feet wide if i say oh I'll just run it over 18 feet so i have a roomy driveway because of the length it would get me into a i would i would start to get lot coverage issue but then again, it's preventing cars from being on the street, right? So it's like a double-edged sword of like, like if you you have a large driveway too, if it goes all the way back to yours and you did more than slightly over 16 feet, you did 18 foot, and then you do a pole so you don't have to back out onto a main street because you want to, Jesse would probably want to put one in like a pole. Then it's like, now you got a lot of pavement going on. I know Upper Arlington probably doesn't really have one because, like, my parents, they have a detached garage. It goes the full <coughs> length, and it attaches their patio, and their yard's, like, the, literally the size of these tables together. Yeah. Because it goes all the way back, you have to be able to turn around. There's no way you're going to get out of there on lane. I mean, I don't think that patios and driveways coverage is, is a concern. It's more of, like, the deck. Uh, and structure. If you had a pool, if you had an in-ground pool and you did a ton of concrete in your backyard, yeah, and took up the whole backyard, you could do an in-ground pool and do concrete all around the whole thing. And have no grass in your yard if you want. He said, right now you can take the concrete up to the property line. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can pave or run concrete or blacktop. Mine is. Mine runs right up my property line. There's no setback for driveways. We can't change that because I got to put my driveway in later. <laughs> 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 I talked to you about your driveway. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to save up the money. 
after my kids get out of daycare. The driveway is below grade <laughs> of the neighbor's <laughs> property, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Really, the biggest issue, if the, if the driveway is below grade of the, of the adjacent property, then typically be, you have that runoff. If it was above, it would be a bigger problem because then it's going to run into their neighbors. Right. Yeah. Because you're pushing, you're going to push the water off your property onto theirs. Right. Or if you if you swale it and if you make one catch point into their yard and they have a low spot, then right. you're also right. just because of the backfill. There's more backfill around your house. Yep. So when it it's settles, it's all right. I got an idea. Let's let's back. table this, this, this. Should we table lot discussions so we can come back with some more specific language? Ben's okay. uh, right now because I think we're turn, we're spinning wheels right now. Go find this examples. Is, What's this that? Is a big show. Yeah, examples. I think I want to look at some other. I think we can find cities. examples, but we should. I want to look at some other cities, but this is a big show. A, gener a generic list point of what we think we need to go to find too. This is a huge part of our zoning. Like, I've looked are, in. Are you going to do, or do we want? I've looked in similar action? cities, our size, yeah. and we're actually a little ahead of most of them. Mm -hmm. So, but not not to say that someone doesn't have a good explanation or created a list or a wait. Uh, a common sense way to, to divide what counts as square footage on your property. So. I hear we're all going the same place here. I think we're all it's kind probably, of it's probably good. A lot of this. Mostly, most of it's going to be permanent things, right? Like, yeah, you can count a trampoline if you wanted to, but if it's not buried in the ground, you might have it for two years and then you pitch it. A lot of this is headed off by HOAs anyway, right? That's true. Because a lot of the new HOAs won't allow those types of pools anyway. You either put a real pool in or an in-ground pool in or nothing. Um, you know, so a lot of these problems get taken care of by HOAs. So that's probably why, like, not in, Albany, his, not in his case. I know. Well, the, see, that, I can't <laughs> believe that neighborhood doesn't have an HOA. It's just they just. Sorry. Yeah. We tried it a couple times, but it's just not together. Yeah. Twice the size. So Dog yeah. By, by it's a chicken coop, not a dog house. So it got to it into a, a concession back and forth and back and forth. Nobody repetitive up this is that's well we did incorporate. You remember Jim? We, we are in there is a corporation. That is in fact I was one of the signers on the oh, corporation. Oh, it's an accessory, it's a, a, it's a volunteer thing. That's I said animal animal housing exceeding a certain square footage. Yeah, because I could have a rabbit hutch style chicken coop or like two chickens. Okay, so we, we need to come back with a definition of swimming pools. We need to come back with a, a list. A list, of, list for lot coverage that's included in of, our lot coverage. Of what is included in lot coverage. Um, I think we can probably continue talking about... Um, like home occupations and stuff like that. Okay. Did you you are right, Jim, with like swing sets. I think they should count. Depends on if they, it depends on what kind of swing set it is. Are they anchored? I'm just saying they, they all should that count. That little aluminum one you buy from Walmart. You gonna count that? And that coverage. really counts. If I'm, you build if you build a tree house, a big giant tree house, it should probably count. <laughs> but I, yeah, those big cedar ones people build. Those That's are, aerial coverage. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot of coverage. If you don't have room for it, you don't have room for it. You know. Well, I do think with pools, just to call out on 30, was a 31.03, there's two different requirements for fences. Oh, yeah. The one says 42 inches and the other says four feet. Yeah, and a 42 inch fence costs you more than a 48. Mm -hmm. So when I issue yeah. a full, full permit, I just say, I've been telling people you got you go with a four foot. Yeah, that's my suggestion as well. So in uh, under C, talks about no less than 42 inches i think we just change that to 48 inches or four feet because yeah. then in e3 when it talks about community or club swimming pools it talks about four feet so well, it's five feet in a lot of places just for Depends consistency requirement for a pool it's five feet in a lot of places yep. which i find hilarious because you're gonna build a five foot fence you're gonna build six but i also think we need to make sure that when we talk about the trigger for the fence requirement for swimming pools that if you were some wording to where if you're purposefully adding water that it becomes a swimming pool at whatever size we deem it to be and thus you need a fence yeah no i think you're right because they do have like you can get 
six foot round, seven foot round pool, mm-hmm. and put it up in your yard, and yeah. you easily somebody could climb in there and drown. Yeah. And some people will dig that down into the ground too. I mean, like even though you know the ones that I just showed you, like you're not supposed to put those in the ground. People do all the time. Oh, yeah. Do you have any comments on thirty point oh nine? Cuts. Yep. Let's wait for thirty one to do the whole chapter together. I think thirty cuts. curb cuts is. Um, just village manager discretion hmm. so should i take it all out i think that's already defined and was it chapter nine and the administrative code i think give them the restriction no more than two and no more than two it doesn't hurt to have these guidelines in there. I would die my thoughts, but you just don't want them to be contradictory. Correct. Let's see if Ben can pull out the administrative one. Part sure nine: that. streets and utilities, sidewalks, streets, driveways, curb cuts. Nine oh five, chapter nine oh five, is where it talks about curb cuts and village manager discretion. If you don't have. To. And things of that nature. Yeah, you're just cutting sidewalks. Okay, I'm going to take it out. And so I would suggest with curb cuts, it's worked thus far. I think Jim has brought forth, Jim, Jim Leonard has brought forth those issues that have needed additional approval. So I just, it's back. not broke, don't fix it, in my opinion. Okay, any comments on additional yard requirements? The only uh, call out I had, 1171. I was, yeah, I had one there for uh, additional yard requirements, two family. Um, so I don't, is everybody on board on taking out the curb cut stuff? I'm not, I don't, I don't know if I'm on board with that. I know yeah, it's Jim's discretion, but there's still, he still has to follow code if it's code, right? I think it's in section. a different it part of the code. Section. It's already codified elsewhere. Correct. It's in <laughs> chapter 905. The same, the same thing as long as there's have more than two curb cuts are in there. I mean, it's got driveway culverts and things like that. I would suggest this This is only, uh, this part can be updated by council, not planning and zoning. So if there's a request that we look at that piece, then it would be a request from planning and zoning to go to village council to review. I'm fine with taking it out as long as zoning and council have a way to stop something that they're not in favor of. Just as long as because yeah, if we just, take it out, then it's just solely yeah, staff. Current staff are great, but in the future they might not be. That's my that's my thought. Sure. That's why we leave it to why we leave it in. Because then they, if it, if it, I mean, if we got some basic rules in there, and if they want to vary from that, they can. But they have to have a variance for you it. Can't leave it in. What's that? You can't leave it in. Why? Because it's up to village manager discretion. It's not up to planning and zoning discretion. It's not planning and zoning's decision. Why is it in there now, though? Because somebody wrote it and didn't realize that it was already up to somebody else's discretion. The whole process is 905. If, if you look at... So you can recommend that it be updated, but we can't leave that in here to be part of the codified ordinances. I just because the, that allows because the charter to... says it's up to... Because chapter 9.05 says that it's up to the village manager. And that supersedes zoning code? It doesn't supersede it. It's just written by a different form of government, a different branch of the government. It's to make sure that you've taken into consideration the legalities with the curb cut. If you look at the curb cuts that have been asked and denied, if you go, you can go all the way back to the Huntington Bank, (laughs) O'Reilly, CVS, all of them wanted access to 62. And they weren't allowed. AutoZone. So if you look at how none of those really have an access, uh, an, a, a way out of their parking lot, they, there was a compromise made between Route 62 car wash and CVS. One entrance was allowed, and they both share that. But everything else, Hopewell Credit Union, they all wanted to pull out on 62, and they weren't allowed. So, and those those decisions were all part of the village manager's decision on each one of those. Um, is there a mechanism to- What I'm saying that it's right now- In the future, 
Is there a mechanism to override that? For there's not a mechanism. For, there's not zoning. a mechanism for you to override that. There's there a mechanism for council, for council to override council that. Yeah. Ultimately, fine. there's a record. There's ultimately council can override anything. We yeah, all. That's, that's what I'm saying. As long as there's a mechanism for an override. There's an appeal. You can appeal it. But so under this zoning code, if we don't delete it, they would need a variance. So it would have to come to our board. But we can't. It's two separate. It's two separate sections of the ord of the codified ordinances. We can't put that in here and put a different format of getting a curb cut than chapter section nine hundred five. Chapter nine hundred five already has, and there's no point in repeating it. Remember, we had to do a curb cut for the far state. So they wouldn't need a variance to code of Jim for Jim Leonard to approve three curb cuts but under our, i wouldn't do that but like you're saying he wouldn't but there's no code that says he can't but in our code it says you can't so See you but you can recommend to council that they put no more than two two curb cuts but we can't put that in here but it's already in here is it in our current no, version? this isn't no this isn't codified so it's, there's nothing about curb cuts in our current version no. okay how to get in this version <laughs> Somebody wrote it was probably in somebody else's code and they took it in, into this without realizing that it's in ch chapter 905. All right, that was my confusion. I apologize then. Okay. I, I, was, I, was I know it's confusing because <laughs> things that are in the utility code, like we were talking about earlier, you know, I we can talk about changing it, we can make a recommendation that it be changed, but I can't change that. Right, yeah. Okay. Because it I falls it under someone else's without purview. taking it out. Okay. Gotcha. Some of those discussions before. We did the same thing in the design regs too. We took out curb cut references because we already have it covered in 905. Because there are references in there as well, I think, with adjacent streets and things like that about the allowable curb cuts and stuff. And we we took that out because it's already covered in 905. My confusion was I thought it was part of the current. Yeah, it's not so we were just yeah. we were changing something yeah. that already the process already yeah. existed. So well, like that's why in it's this document we don't go into flows for like, yeah. sewer and utility. Oh no, yeah, and I got that whole part of it. That's too. all in somebody that. else's code. Right. That's someone else's jurisdiction and curb cuts. I got you. I'm with, I'm on board. I that my confusion just was where it came from. <laughs> Okay. The only Sorry. other thing that I would add to this section with general development standards is our current 1171.07 about construction material storage and just making sure that 1171.07 says in a residential district, the storage of construction material on any one lot shall be limited to the quantity of material required for the construction of the dwelling unit, the units proposed for such lot and shall be stored only for the length of time reasonably necessary to complete construction and in any event not to exceed one year and that's just i think to cover to make sure you don't have a developer using an empty lot just storing everything on that lot for the entirety of that development and it's you know lot by lot you storing know, material for another project on you know that construction site and stuff like that which i didn't see anywhere else in here so i just might suggest adding that in but do we want to limit that to residential to be commercial should we include it in commercial? I don't know why you wouldn't. I would do both. This morning, I could go. Because you, you, to that point, you might buy something in bulk. Right. Like, oh, I got a great deal on this pipe. Yeah. And I bought an extra 2,000 linear foot because I'm going to build another one in six months. And I'll buy right here. I bought a whole spool of wire. You just don't want to have a, I mean, a potential like development a become a storage area. site for another location. Yeah, get their underground stuff so they store it in that section. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Additional yard requirements. The, the only difference that we would have between what's on the books now and what we're proposing is adding commercial into it. Because right now it's already in the books for residents. Yeah, it's on the book. Yeah, Ben, I think it's a good idea. All right. Yeah, I mean, they, they could have done it like when they built a nursing home, they could have bought an extra 200 doors because they were going to build another one. Right. Throw them up there. Yeah. For a month and a kind of Limited to that parcel for that development only. It shouldn't be an issue, but it would be nice to have, if it would become an issue, right. it'd be nice to have language yep. to support it. With the prices. <laughs> Get deal. Now you'd need an armed guard on the lot with it. That's right. Well, prices are coming down. Yeah, I know. I saw that. <laughs> down a little bit. It's wonderful. Um, and then 1171.08, when it talks about sewer lines, 
Taco Bell two by fours. Um, I don't know how this would conflict if it may conflict with rural residential as it is right now, but 117108 says lines carrying the effluent from all toilets, baths, sinks, commercial or manufacturing processes shall be connected with the municipal sanitary sewage system. But with rural residential, I think there's an understanding that if you're bringing in at one lot per three acres that you have enough for leach field or something like that, you don't have to be if it's not, you know, running from no, you do. Everybody has to be connected. If, if it connects in, they have to. Yeah, if it's a neighborhood. Yeah, if, if it running, annexes not, if in and it's being developed, it has to be connected. No what matter if how big. It's not being developed. You're saying if somebody buys a five acre lot. Correct. And annexes it in. No, they're just saying you do a split. You do a lot split somewhere. Bus five acres. I own a farm and I give my kids, I want to give my kid five acres. I build a house. I'm pretty sure it still has to connect. I don't think we'd do anything else to connect anything else unless they they were i think all... it is a requirement mm -hmm. yeah if you're within the, if your property is annexed in the village <coughs> if it's available you have to have it mm -hmm. yeah. that's fair okay now we have customers you know that are outside the village and have water but we they pay double the rate for their water i don't think we have any the sewer it's water might be then we would I, we probably want to add 1171.08 to this because it's not in here that helps yeah, those, are, those, are, those are great questions those are things that i do that's what i'm saying i would do the same thing those are things that i do whatever whatever i'd like to request that we yeah, save we chapter section 31 until the next meeting yeah i'm good to go i think it's easy enough Jesus. Accessory buildings. <laughs> uh, yep, bro. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's move on. So what I'll do next time is add add section 30.08 and then all of chapter 31. Yes. Do we have anything else? Zoning inspector. Did you see that though? Man, Jim had an above ground pool on there. Or do we need to sign that do you have an option <laughs> what does it look like i saw that yeah jim's jim's report reads like chaos if you just read down through you got trash cans left in the road you got signs you got chickens running loose well Dogs you know what cats living together <laughs> he fixed that he fixed that problem <laughs> Nice. They fixed that chicken problem, Jim. Yeah, we got chicken problem. Well, you know, the trash can thing was because they we all thought that they were coming on they moved it would move it back a day for fourth of July, but they still came on the regular day. They did, yeah. I think they had that on their annual list. They they had it on the website or whatever, but well, I know they came at eight o'clock last night. So we kept our that's a, they're crazy, they crazy pickup. Yeah, they came in our neighborhood about eight o'clock. <laughs> You yeah. never know. The recycle comes at like yeah, six in the good. morning, but the trash. Yeah. Wow. Did you have any further public comment? Okay. Yep. Go ahead. What about uh, a a pool that's not taken down is a permanent pool. Uh, if, if you're not going to take it down after the season, it's a permanent pool. Yeah. Okay. That my part, my opinion. The the pool that's next to me is a permanent pool. It's not going to go any place. It's surrounded by a deck um another thing very quickly in again mine 31.02 about front yards no accessory structures may be placed in the front yard um we have a, a socket soccer net that's anchored that's been there for a year on the property line for obvious reasons um but it's, it's is that is that permanent is that is that an accessory and i don't think it's a accessory, but it's sitting there this is nothing well define that is it permanent is it is it recreational is it something temporary for a party or, or for a get together a cookout uh, how are you going to do that? Right. Well, you, I didn't, what you, the, the point that you just brought up, I didn't think about like the, uh, like school bus shacks, you know what I'm talking about? That people put. 
we don't, don't have a ton of them, but like no, that, it, that would be accessory building. That'd be something you put in your front yard. Well, I, I think that's that's where it comes comes down of uh, of it identifying. Now, if this is true, if this is going to be true, no accessory structures may be placed in the front yard. Structures use other things. Why would the front yard be included in the lot coverage when you're talking about accessory uses? Why, why you're, you're not putting anything there. You're not allowing anything there, mm -hmm. except the soccer net, huge soccer net. <laughs> so my, I guess my point is this, the lot coverage should be what the backyard is compared what they have. And again, I, I hate to keep referring, but this is, uh, this is where we're at. What they have in a big lot may be okay, may look okay, but not in the small backyard lot that they have. It doesn't make sense. And they have a patio, a fire pit, a, a swing set. Somebody mentioned swing set. Yes, swing set is an accessory use. You better believe it because you have to dismantle it. Check the definitions. I did. Anything erected, placed, is considered accessory. Now, define it. That's where the other thing, somebody said, well, maybe we need to, Jim made, made a comment about making a list. Just got to go around the neighborhood <laughs> and start making a list. And all of a sudden, you'll find playhouses, Playhouses, uh, the uh, the plastic kind, along with the wooden structure. Temporary garages. And temporary garages, yeah, those are. And and so carports and things of that nature. And yes, you're you're talking about um, the runoff from putting concrete up to the property line. Well, on the other side, that's exactly what they want to do, and there's a runoff to the property next to them. I ask, what about drainage? Well, we haven't looked about that yet. Don't know about that. That was before, obviously, other things, <laughs> other words were, were, were talked about. But anyway, point being, that's why it has to be tight. That's why, because there's going to be other, we're going to become a city. We're going to become a city, different people. No more of good old boy or whatever, that it did happen for years and years. Rolling Meadows created zoning in Johnstown. <laughs> it created zoning. When Rolling Meadows, Rolling Meadows, there was no zoning in Johnstown because I remember my parents thought, oh, we need zoning in this town. We need zoning. They're building all these houses down there. Well, that's that's created it. So when you when you when you step when you step back and I look at the lot coverage and if you use living space, well, what about where you're gonna put the stuff? Living space has nothing to do with it. What about the area that you have to put the stuff on? And if you're not gonna use the front yard because that's what this says, then you don't include the front yard. That's not part of the calculation. And so you get 30% of the backyard, that's it. And you have two structures, not five, two. Yeah, that's what we no, kind of said. I mean, that, that's what we kind of jokingly said. You get a shed, you get a shed in a garage or a shed in the pool or- a, yeah. That's it. I mean, the, the, this is one, area, one of the areas that we really want to tighten yeah. up. The, the point of the backyard makes a lot of sense because <laughs> like my house sits 10 feet from a road. I have all backyard. We allow sheds and side yards, but 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 that goes but, but, that goes but back I, to the, I can fit a lot more stuff in my backyard than if you have a twenty foot deep backyard and a fifty foot deep front yard. You can't fit nearly as much stuff as me, but you might have the same size yard as I do. Exactly, and 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 then you 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 look at the side yard and what about the setbacks? We have a swing set that's on the property line practically. 
swings aren't in there. That's part of their carnival lights that they, they strung. Uh, you know, they use the, the swing set. Uh, trampling is on the property line. Soccer nets on the property line. There should be a so, setback for accessories too. So you, so you, you, you start, you, you start looking, you start looking and, and adding this up. Now, I'm going to throw a curve, and somebody's not going to like me right off the bat. Accessory uses should have its own section. Reason being, I counted at least a dozen times accessory use is mentioned in this document at various places. Well, where is it? You want to know? I didn't bring it up with me. Accessory use, look at the first page. Accessory use is something that's accessory, accessory to the principal building or something like that. That's not, that's not a definition. You should reference it maybe in other places, but you have one section that encompasses everything pertaining to accessory use. And it's not, it, it should not be out there so many different places. We, we have it here in, a, in, a, in general development standards. Well, in every section, every district has it. Then you have a big section <laughs> that is about half a page and it talks about it. Then we just talked about it in PUD. Well, it, it, it's, that's not the way to do it. Clean it up, consolidate. Clean it, clean it and, and consolidate and put it in, in one section. So um, any, anyway, I, that's, uh, now you're getting to the heart of, of why I'm here. The accessory uses, yes, you can make a definition and everybody, you make that list, everybody knows. Everybody knows exactly what they can and can't do. And it's not going to be a question. What's your lot size? Pretty easy to probably measure. It can be a little, angles can be a little awkward for, for a lot of people, but in general, what would it be? And then it's X percentage. That's what you're allowed to cover. That's it. With setbacks, with true setbacks. And then you hold those setbacks to be true. And so that's, that's, you know, you got to the point where I, where I, uh, it's, it's important to me. So anyway, I, I just want to, so we come off the there's, definition. Yeah, there's more, there's more to it than, than just that. But in general, that's, that's my suggestion is to, is to really consolidate and, and to put all that together. And we can make a list. There's there's yeah. enough people here and enough neighborhoods drive around. You 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 make all kinds. You'll find all kinds of things around with people, and you know that. You're gonna expand accessories instead of thinking ex accessory structures. This is like yard accessories or lot accessories. <laughs> you know the the current definition does talk about use and structure, so it, it's it's not necessarily. Um, and it, I, I, it's, it's okay, but it, it doesn't give really good examples mm -hmm. and, and swimming pools is, are one duck decks are one, of course. So you add to it, you don't allow what, what happened down there. You don't allow that anymore. So, but anyway, there's more, but it's late. You guys had two meetings. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I think Jim. Um, we'll move into our zoning inspector report. You have anything notable on there? Uh, Chaos, chickens. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, ground pools. The only thing that was down is. Uh, total home new home permits are down a little bit considering that um compared to what i'm not sure what to expect the rest of the year uh schlebach had had four permitted they they're start digging them today i won't i don't think i'll get any more permits from them this year uh pulte right now is on hold 
uh, for a, a, an unrelated issue. Um, and um, Miranda has no more lots left. So well, a Buena Vista, I'll probably get a couple more there, but it's okay. just about sold out. No more feedback on the lot back there, like those 12 to 15 homes? Yes. Uh, yes, Bailey can tell you. The developer and the owner, I think after the preliminary plan was approved, determined that the preliminary plan is too much money. They're not gonna make a return on their all their work. So they're currently investigating what they can do to kind of sell the lot and make it usable. So that's the update that I have. Was it, was it density? Did they give any feedback as to what it was or just the um, financially? It was I think it was just financially, just wasn't financially feasible for the homes that they were looking at doing and the amount of space that they had and the work that they were going to have to put in to, to do a subdivision there. It just wasn't yeah. going to work for them. Do you think they'll sell it and try to put maybe five houses back there or something? I'm not sure. He's, four, well, he's, got, he's kicking around two or three different ideas. Yeah, I'm not sure. Probably sell it, put four houses back there. At least we got some feedback on it. Now it's been sitting out there for a minute. Got a swimming pool. That's where the splash pad is going to be in the back. Yeah. We're going to have a parking lot size splash pad back there. <laughs> Second uh, the park. Shell station. <laughs> dog park. Wave pool. Shell station. The Shell station. Uh, no. We signed a letter. Uh, they had to have a letter that gave a, uh, our permission to have it debranded, which is required by the federal government. So you'll see the the uh, or the uh, shell signs go away. It might continue to operate for a short period of time, uh, but there's some federal law regarding selling a competitor's gas. So so we signed the letter. Um, that's about all we know about it right now. It looked like they were surveying that land today. Were they? About five o'clock. They were putting Roundup in the tree. <laughs> Not funny. We have uh, two new businesses in Johnstown. You guys probably know about one of them is a young lady opened a barber shop here on South Main Street. Yeah. Kendra. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. doing very well. And uh, we have another business that it's an internet sales business and it's in the Coglin building. Um, and it's two young guys that they're from Johnstown and they're doing very well. He's, they advertise their product, but when you order it, it comes from Amazon. So. Okay. How many how many businesses do we have in that building currently? Seven. Seven. Are there is there room for any more? Or? Um. No, not really. When Every I think I about turn it, around, there's something else. It's there's fully games utilized over there now. It's fully utilized. Okay. I gotta go over there and try the skill games. <laughs> There been any follow up about that parcel that we split off on the other side that Coglin still owns? No, I mean he raised the price two hundred thousand on it. That's all I know. It's for sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last they said they were gonna they wanted to put something on there, but he raised it to seven hundred thousand. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've directed some. I've directed some interested parties towards it, but I haven't heard anything yeah. specifically. The Pulte sign. The Pulte sign, uh, after we chased it around for a couple months, they resubmitted a sign application and paid the fee and it was approved. Okay. For how long? Another year. Okay. Um, you had a note in here about commercial sign upgrade? Uh, yeah. The uh, that one's been hanging out there, but there's been a little bit of movement on it. The Johnstown Square Shopping Center is going to redo their sign. We're keeping the same uh, base and the surround, but the inside of it is going to be redone. And then the KSEPS auto repair sign is going to be replaced. The one on 62? Yes. It's moving to a monument sign, is that right? Yeah, it, but it's still going to be 13 feet high because of its location, which it can it can be. But That's, it'll have a monument sign base. It's not really a monument sign. 
It's still allowed to be at 13 feet. Actually, it's been allowed to be 15. Okay. It'll be 13. Okay. So Pulte, what's what's held up on Pulte right now? I'm sorry. We can't discuss that. Yeah, we can't That's a hot discuss. topic. They're held up for what? It's not related to the home building. I'll put it that way. It's not deal all right i just have one more question oh one more and then, and then then I'll item number one here trash cans left at road ongoing issue needs to find ordinance language for enforcement yes we talked, we talked about, about that, that last time or, yeah been a we while. said we were going to create something for jim so you can knock doors and tell them to get yeah we're real weak i mean you're not allowed, not allowed to block a sidewalk and some of the areas don't even have sidewalks and they just leave their trash cans in the front yard like Edwards Road. And I've, I have I've fixed part of it, but I can't fix the other part. I don't think they're just going to be defiant. What What do you need? And is it enforceable if we propose updating? Yeah, we need, we need it spelled out that after so many hours after your trash is picked up, you're to return the can uh, to the, the side yard. your side yard or your right. rear yard. Or put it in your garage, or I could envision a safety component to that, especially if it's left down by the roadway and blows away. I agree. Or yes. Into the road. Yep. And that to me feels like a justification for at least entertaining something. It's gonna have to be a little bit of time because sometimes they come about the time I get my bed. Sure. Plus, I, I mean, I think within away, somewhere between twelve and twenty-four hours, yeah. I would. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's reasonable because yeah. people are out of town. They put their trash can. Guy travels for his job. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. There, there's got to be some flex in there. Is there uh, <laughs> favorability from the commission to ask for an ordinance in two weeks to entertain? Oh yeah, us? yeah. That's what. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it. Is that something you guys, Jim and Bailey, would have time to do? Jim, I got to pass that to you. Do you have time for that? Yep. Jim's already got it. Right. Already got it. <laughs> Sorry, I think Rick. It could be just a couple. He's writing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wrote it two words. <laughs> it'd just be a couple lines. Yeah. I don't think it would need to be anything. Jim's off road now. Yeah. Jim. <laughs> I mean, I think you could even do 72 hours because, like you said, people might be traveling. It's just a permanent, you don't want it permanently out there, right? Well, they just keep it. The, the ones that? that I'm familiar I mean, I with. Think under 24. 24. Like, yeah, 24 is all you want. 72 feels like The, the ones that I'm familiar yeah. with, they just keep them parked there and they carry the trash out to them. That's what they do. That's all they know. Yeah. 24 seems appropriate, in my opinion. I'm just going to get a dumpster like my neighbor has. Dumpster out there. When we went on vacation, I would have got cited then. I'll, I'll come get you. Oh, your neighbor. Next time I did you. have my I'll neighbor take it out, but I didn't tell him to bring it back. We, here. Ha we <laughs> haven't received yeah. any applications for your consideration at the next meeting, so it'll be another work session. It's 88. Stock of Will Silver. No, they're on 62. It was, it was a McCabe's job. Well, yeah, I get did take it back. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure.